Hello, how are you doing? I want to talk to you today about another book prize, and I am so excited to discuss this, uh, both because of this year's shortlist, and I'm soon going to get into talking about each of the six novels on this year's shortlist, uh, but also for who this book prize is named after and dedicated to. And this is the Orwell Prize for Political Fiction. And I've always been a fan of George Orwell's writing ever since I was a teenager, uh, not just for his most famous novels, 1984 and Animal Farm, but also as many other wonderful novels like Keep the Aspidistra Flying and A Clergyman's Daughter, and uh, also his nonfiction like Down and Out in Paris and London and The Road to Wigan Pier and his many essays. And I've just always loved his writing and how engaged it is with political ideas while telling a really engaging in like artfully constructed story and so I think it's so wonderful that the Orwell Foundation uh, runs a number of different awards to celebrate the best new political writing every year and it, it aspires to award writing that makes political writing into an art form which is something that George Orwell always did. So this is actually only the third year that the Fiction Prize has been awarded uh, even though the foundation has been been running a number of different awards for years uh, for political nonfiction and for journalism and writers that expose the social evils in, in Britain today. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that they are awarding fiction now as well because I think so many novels really engage with these like political, social, moral, and historical issues in a really engaging and, and artful way. And uh, so the first first winner of the uh, Political Fiction Prize back in 2019 was Anna Byrne's novel Milkman, um, which was a much lauded novel and I mean really didn't come to, to prominence until it, until it started to win a number of, of book prizes like, like the Booker Prize. And um, so yeah, I'm so glad that this, uh, this novel was being like celebrated and, and read by a lot of people. Uh, but then last year it was awarded to The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead and and I loved this novel and I was especially glad that uh, this won the award last year because I feel like this didn't get all that much prize attention. And it's interesting for me following a number of different book prizes to see which books like end up on a number of different prize lists and, and which don't. Uh, so the, the long list for this year's uh, Orwell Prize for Political Fiction had a, a number of books um, which have been on different book prize lists um, but which didn't make it to this year's shortlist. So there's The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rafi, um, which won the overall Costa Book Awards um, this year. And there is Wenner Weather by Jenny Offal, um, which was shortlisted for last year's Women's Prize for Fiction, and which I was sort of controversially like hoping would, would win uh, last year's award, even though it didn't actually win. And uh, also Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart, um, which won last year's Booker Prize. Yeah, I just always think that's that's interesting to see that even though some of these books won a, other book awards um yeah didn't actually make it to the finals of this year's list and so these are the six books on uh this year's short list and uh, and yeah some of them like have got prize attention before but some of them really haven't so i think that's really exciting and and also personally for me i've read three of these novels um but not read the other three yet and uh, that's always the best sort of situation I think with a book award when uh, I look at a list um, up for that year's award and, and I've read some of them but not other ones and ones that I've been wanting to get to. So I'm going to briefly go through each of these books and give my thoughts about them uh, but I'd love to know in the comments if you've read any of these books and which uh, of these you would, you would hope to see uh, win this year's award um, which is going to be announced in just a little over a week. Also I want to say that um, the the uh, the, the the Orwell Foundation published uh, this new uh, edition of uh, George Orwell's essay, uh, Some Thoughts on the Common Toad, um, which is a really like timely um, essay to, to come out because he wrote this just after the end of the, the Second World War, well, the spring after the Second World War, and he's sort of reflecting back on the, the tumultuous, that tumultuous time, um, but also looking at the sort of structures of, of government and what uh, 
uh, sort of needs to be changed in how our political systems are run to, to deal with crises like this. And um, so, yeah, it's very timely that this has come out now as we're just coming out of this global pandemic, I mean, which is still ongoing, but, um, but still coming out of it. But sort of looking back and evaluating what needs to be done in the political system to help us better cope with situations like this. And um, this includes a new introduction um, by George Orwell's son, who is called uh, Richard Blair. And, um, and that's because uh, George Orwell's true name is Eric Blair. And, uh, and that's another um, reason which sort of endeared me to George Orwell, because uh, when I learned what his real birth name was, um, you know, that he's also called Eric, uh, like me, um, you know, that just sort of naturally endeared me to him. So looking at the six novels shortlisted for this year's award, uh, first off there is Leave the World Behind by Rahman Alam. And this is a very thrilling novel uh, about a kind of typical family uh, that goes on holiday and rents an Airbnb uh, house out in the countryside in New York. And uh, while they are staying there, a big cataclysmic event happens in the world and they're sort of cut off from this um, because all their television and phones and communication are cut off and so they don't really know what's happening. Uh, but the couple who actually owns this house, um, who's a black couple that arrives from New York City, uh, just arrives on their doorstep one night and there's a very tense um, sort of interaction between them and as the, the couple want to re-inhabit their house as this crisis is going on. And so, yeah, there's this very tense relationship between this couple and this family that's renting their household and as things gradually are uncovered about what's happening in the larger world and they start observing how nature is changing around them, um, yeah, it becomes really terrifying and tense. And so, yeah, it's sort of making bigger statements about environmental change, uh, but also about racial and social tensions in America. And yeah, I found it in absolutely like enthralling novel and I was completely gripped by it. Next is A Paragon by Colm McCann and this novel is about two fathers who are on either side of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, but both of these fathers lose their daughters and in their grief they form a connection and a bond with each other and a really strong friendship and through this friendship, they, they try to start to enact change in uh, their, their regions. And this is a very topical subject, I think, to, to come up because um, uh, very like sadly, the um, Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been much in the news lately as it's been escalating again. And so it's a very timely story. And Colin McCann uh, based this novel on his interviews with um, two men very like the, the men portrayed in this novel, and he got their blessing uh, to, to create this novel. So yeah, I've heard this is such a powerful book and one that I've been wanting to get to. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, which is also currently on the shortlist for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction and was one of my favorite books that I read last year. It's the story of two light-skinned black sisters growing up in the American South and they go on to live very different lives from each other. Um, so it follows their stories but also the stories of their daughters and it's such a meaningful tale about the formation of identity, um, what remains fixed in our identity, what we can alter, and the, the repercussions of that. And it, it looks at this from so many different ways, and it's such a, such a gripping tale, um, as well as a poignant one. And this has been a much beloved novel, and so I'm so happy to see it get more award attention. The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweki Amir and this novel is about a Nigerian boy. I'm told from uh, the many different perspectives of people in his lives and the, the story begins with the death of the main character as he's found on the, the doorstep of his family home and about his overprotective mother and his distant father and it's looking at different aspects of identity whether it's national identity or sexual identity or gender identity 
um, yeah, from all these different perspectives. And I've not read this yet, uh, partly because I had really mixed feelings about the, the author's debut novel, Freshwater. And I, I thought it was a really interesting book, but didn't entirely work for me. But I've, I've heard this is a, a much stronger novel in some ways. And, and it's one I think I'll connect with a bit more strongly. So it is one that I would like to read. Summer by Ali Smith. And this novel mainly focuses uh, around the lives of, of a family of a single mother um, who's an ex-actress and who's divorced and lives next door to her ex-husband and her son and her daughter. And it looks at each of their different lives as well as a number of the uh, lives of people they come into to contact with, uh, but is really about our current times and is looking really at, at and it references, you know, the recent pandemic and uh, and looks at issues to, to do with that, but also to do with Britain's history and, and goes into some different historical periods and, and how that reflects upon the, the present time. And and this is the, the fourth novel in her monumental seasonal quartet that she's been writing over the, the past four years. And I thought it's just the most beautiful, moving story, like not just in its Itself, but the the summation of the quartet and all of the the things she's written about over the course of those books and I made a, a whole review video like giving my passionate response to to this book which I, I'll link below if you haven't seen it before but uh, but yeah I just loved this novel so much and obviously I'm a big fan of Ali Smith's writing and finally there's a novel I've not read yet but which I'm so eager to get to and this is Afterlives by Abdul Razak Gurna this is the story of a number of different characters in Africa whose lives are affected by colonialism over the years, uh, but who also try to affect change themselves by being involved in a number of different uprises against colonialism. And Gurna uh, was born in Zanzibar, but he's lived in, in Britain for many years. And I've really enjoyed and appreciated his writing before. Um, I've read his novel By the Sea, um, which is a life uh, about the lives of a number of different refugees that, that come to, to Britain and is such a powerful novel. And I, d I haven't seen Afterlives um, getting any other book prize attention. So I'm so glad that uh, the, the Orwell Prize has um, been giving it, yeah, giving it this, this platform uh, as well. And, and so hopefully more people will read, read it now and it's encouraged me to finally get around to, to reading it. Uh, so those are the six novels which on this year's uh, shortlist. Uh, like I said, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think about them or if you're eager to read any of these now and also who you think might win this year's award, um, which as I said, will be announced in just over a little over a week's time. Um, if I had to pick a winner, I mean, obviously I haven't read all of the books yet, um, so it's difficult for me to decide, but, um, but what I would probably pick as the winner is Summer by Ali Smith. Um, um, and for slightly like selfish reasons, just because it hasn't won any awards yet. And I think it really deserves to win awards, not just for this novel itself, but for the quartet. And I know that's a kind of like biased opinion. And if I was an actual judge on the prize, I would just have to judge this novel in itself. Um, but since I'm not a judge on the prize, I can be biased and say that I would love to see Ali Smith um, given an award for um, the the entire quartet that she's been written. And I think this winning the award would be sort of symbolic of that, but also emphasizing the real political engagement of this novel and the whole quartet with our current politics. I mean, the way she writes about this, this subject and our current times is like, I think both a very valuable document of our times and the mentality and sensibility of our, our current time periods, but, but also, yeah, really giving a complex look at the politics from many different perspectives, which is what we really need now. And so I think it's really excellent in, in that way. But who knows what will actually win the award. And I might feel differently if I get to reading more of these books, um, either before or after the, the award is announced for this year. So thank you for watching me discuss uh, all of these books and, and talking about this award. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.